Let's turn our attention over to Tony Drake, CFP, Drankit Associates, to get your view on the market. What's happening here? Nicole, we're all watching these big names, these big tech company earnings. These reports mark kind of investors' first look at how these mega cap companies fared during the second quarter. Reports from these names are really being watched, I think, by Wall Street, all investors, because, you know, these seven were really the main drivers of the market for most of this year's gains. And, you know, one of the fastest ways that rotation can occur, you know, would be for earnings miss for these uh, magnificent seven. So not all bad news, though. We may be seeing a shift from AI enthusiasm to maybe AI disappointment. I think the next two weeks are going to be pivotal, but we are seeing a rotation of small caps. That's a good thing for the health of the market long term. This rotation may be healthy, although we're feeling the pain in the short term. And when you see a name like Tesla down 11 percent, for example, do you say, oh, I, I would love to buy that or Google down three and a half percent? Is that buy to you or no? Yeah, I think there's some great opportunities long term. You know, it's always hard to time the exact bottom of these pullbacks, but you look at the possibilities of these companies and there has been a lot of enthusiasm around AI that's affecting this magnificent seven. But, you know, long term, we feel pretty confident about these names. If you were kind of sitting on the sideline wishing you had some shares, when you see these pullbacks, you see the market reaction, a little bit of anxiety, maybe rotation with some of these small caps, right? If we look at the Russell 2000 up 9% on a month you know dow was only up two percent the s p was fairly unchanged other than especially if you take out these uh tech heavy uh nasdaq symbols so you know maybe an opportunity to jump into some of these if you've been sitting on the sideline i see um you know is there a disconnect happening here i see some back and forth action when it comes to economic indicators um how are consumers feeling as well yeah, I think that's something we're all really watching closely as the consumers because, you know, we, we've all kind of priced in, I think, you know, the, this potential interest rate cut. But I think some of the economic data is not lining up with, with consumer confidence. If you look at consumers, the data is pretty clear. They're not feeling great. About 60% of consumers surveyed say they feel like we're in a recession. They're not feeling confident about the future of the markets. You know, a lot of folks with variable interest home loans are seeing those start to rise. That can cause a lot of pressure. You know, there's that old adage, right? A consumer confidence can make a make a bad market or it can break a good market. So it's always something we're watching very carefully, but it's pretty clear right now consumers are not feeling confident, even though we're starting to see some of that CPI data come down and some other indicators that would, would, would make us believe that the markets are doing fairly well. Right, understood. Um, so with that, if, it were, if you have consumers worried, that's going to affect GDP, and that could bring everything down because then they won't be spending, right? Um, Visa explained some of that even today. Yeah, we saw some of that today. We're definitely seeing some of that spending pullback. Um, you know, we've all been watching it in the housing market. People are very hesitant to change housing opportunities. Mortgage demand continues to drop. You know, even though rates have dropped about 20 basis points in the last few weeks, applications for mortgage are still down about 4% last week compared with the previous week. So, you know, we're just seeing those consumers not spending, not switching homes, not getting new mortgages, you know, and, and that makes it tough, especially as we get into some of these companies that are really dependent on that consumer spending, that could really give us a hit here in the short term. So when you're putting together a portfolio, tell me a little bit about what it should have in it. I mean, we've been watching the inversion of the yield curve, too. That's been flattening some. Um, tell me a little bit about what you would put in a diversified portfolio. Yeah, we're definitely, um, you know, looking at, we always want to maintain that diversification, Nicole, and most of our clients are retirees or people nearing retirement. So we want to definitely make sure we have a portion that's a little bit safer. Right. We don't want to have everything exposed in the market for retirees, but that diversification is important. I think it's really easy to get sucked into these high flying technology names. Of course, there's some great gains there, but you want to have a balanced approach. Again, we've talked a little bit about the small caps. Those are looking pretty strong right now. So there's some great opportunities there as well. And when you take that more diversified approach, you're going to have some winners. You're going to have some things that are losers. But long term, we should get some nice, steady growth. Most of our clients aren't looking to hit home runs. They're looking to hit singles and doubles. So taking that more balanced approach is really going to be the way to get there. 
We can talk about the S&P 493 finally climbing out. I mean, the idea is that market breadth is improving and it's not just tech anymore and there's rotation. Um, is that for real? You know, do you feel like the market will be higher by the end of the year? I mean, if the 493 does better, that would be great. Um, and the market would be higher than where we are now. Do you think that's fair to say or no? I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I mean, that's what we really want to see in a healthy market. You know, if you look at the growth, you take that seven out, there's been some pretty phenomenal growth in those seven, but we just had not been seeing that when it came to the kind of breadth and depth of the entire market. So seeing some of that shift is good. I think we're at a point we've got to wait and see what happens if that continues. We've seen these Magnificent Seven have these short-term pullbacks just to shoot up again. I still think there's a lot of that AI enthusiasm. Um, so we really are hoping that this does start to spread out. I think that's going to be really great for the economy as we hopefully have this soft landing. So what worries you? Is it, uh, you know, the uncertainty of the election? Is it the rate environment that you're not sure what the Fed may or may not do? Um, is it certain sectors like tech? You talked about the growth of tech. Do you think it's too frothy? I mean, what worries you at this point about this market? Yeah, I think most market indications look pretty healthy right now, and I think long term they're going to be good. I think any time you have these election cycles, especially with what's happening on the Democratic side, certainly some uncertainty. We're going to see some swings. You know, you're going to see people react to that. But what we try to assure our clients is, you know, we really want to take a long term look. Trying to guess these short term, you know, rises and drops is pretty difficult. Most people don't do it successfully. So you want to have that long term look. You want to have a diversified portfolio. I don't want folks to get caught up in the political rhetoric. It, it's, it's easy to get swayed by that. Oftentimes it's kind of grandstanding and big statements. But we want to invest based on policies and laws that are passed. Um, but but that certainly bring, does bring that uncertainty, and you always worry. I mean, you, you see some of the media, media, excuse me, the rapid rises of some of these technology names like Nvidia, and, and you know you wonder, you know, will we see a larger pullback because so much of that growth has been concentrated in those names? That's what's causing us to be a little bit excited about what looks like this broadening of the market, and hopefully that continues. Right, understood. All right, Tony Drake. Drake and Associates appreciate